The summer heat is here and it's time to refresh your spring containers. On this episode of Garden Time, we stop by Portland Nursery and we chat with Laura about summer container plant combinations. We also get tips on taking care of them too. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru in Salem, Oregon. Here at Capital Subaru, we are family. From you, our customers, our coworkers, and even our actual family members work here. This is my son, Casey. We're generations ahead of the competition, and we're always working to keep you and your family moving. We're here for you. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. All the support you need, from sales and financing, to service and parts. We'll be here for you for generations to come. And generations after that. I'm Blake. And I'm Casey. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. Where it's your, your way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. Welcome to the Garden Time Podcast. We're based in the Pacific Northwest of the United States in a Zone 8 region. This zone deals with plants that can survive in 10 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. I'm producer Jeff Gustin with your hosts Judy Alaruzzo and Ryan Seeley. Welcome to Garden Time. Today we are at Portland Nursery on Stark Street. They also have a store on Division. And we're talking with Laura, our, our dear friend Hello. here at Portland Nursery, about uh, containers. And Laura, I know every year, People, they build a container for the spring, yep. or they build one for the fall, mm -hmm. and it starts looking pretty bad. So yes. today we're gonna to talk with you about some different combinations that people can do. Now, how long are these combinations gonna last? It depends. Um, some of them will last just for a season because they're strictly annuals. Um, some of them will have evergreen shrubs that you fill in with annuals. So some of them can last for many years as okay. well. And we can, we're going to be talking about how you can replace some of yeah. those too. That's a little secret, so you have to stay tuned for that. So I'm going to step out and we're going to let uh, these guys go to town. So take it away. All right. Well, you know, Laura, if, we know Laura. We've traveled with her. She was on our tour last year mm -hmm. to Holland and to Belgium. So um, it was so fun to be with you and yeah. to talk plants. And so now that's just a continuation with all these container ideas. Yes, definitely. Um, it's great to take that inspiration and keep it going. Mm, excellent. So now we have a lot on the table today. <laughs> if you know, you can't see it. There's a full table full of lots of colors, lots of textures, heights, evergreen, non evergreen, mm -hmm. flowering. But overall, you have some basic themes yes. that you've kind of assembled. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll just kind of start down on, on the one end down here and kind of work through and then just tell okay. us kind of what the theme that you're going after. And we'll just talk, Sounds talk about good. some of the plants. Um, my first theme here is a tropical theme. So I started for my thriller or my focal point is this gorgeous Tropicana Black Canna, um, burgundy leaves. And they get about, I want to say six feet tall so a nice size yeah, container. nice size container it will need protection in a colder climate okay um so so that's my thriller and it also has red flowers yeah so you know that real rich burgundy large mm -hmm. focal point leaf and then a red yeah. red flower and then contrasting with the dwarf papyrus this is called prince tut it's green and strappy and it's like little fireworks at the end of a stem so like that grassy texture contrasting with the rich heavy burgundy is a nice do you recommend that when you do containers so that you get a lot of different kind of textures yeah. instead of all the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like you're contrasting texture and color. Mm. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, and then these can, you know, the papyrus, does it come back or is it another one that needs a little bit of it's some a, protection? It needs protection yeah. or you just don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you have the energy. Just come back and buy it again next right. year. Whatever you have the energy just for. Just enjoy it. it. Yeah. And then what animals? So, so then you have, you know, so yeah, those are kind of your tall ones. So mm -hmm. then you're kind of moving into that intermediate. That, the intermediate. That and kind of that I went with um, Kufea uh, fireworks, I believe. Um, and it's just a hummingbird magnet. I love Ooh. the shapes of the flowers too. Yes. Kind of that red, purple, bicolor throat. But just like having the hummingbirds visiting your containers oh, is just wonderful. And, and this is one that's like, you know, I don't know if Jeff can zoom in on this, but it's also called bat face. Yes. Kufea. Yeah, so if you're <laughs> looking at the, the flower on here it looks like a little bat thing, it's pretty cool super cool and this will go all summer long mm -hmm. I mean, you know even in the fall it's kind of fun yeah nice. if you want to have Perfect. something for mm -hmm. that halloween decorating it will go all summer yes and be in full glory fun, for fun. the fall so that's kind of a fun one and what else there i see something just green green leaves yeah that's your tr um marguerite sweet potato vine it's just such a big bold truckle they get huge and long and just lush and chartreuse um again you need to protect it for the winter or just replace them every year. And then I couldn't decide on what to do for the other ones. So maybe you all can help <laughs> yeah. me decide. Um, I got a Bordeaux Super Cal, 
which is this one's burgundy and it's a cross between a calabrocoa and a petunia. Oh. So it's got a slightly bigger flower than a calabrocoa. And that's the other one right. I chose. What is was the other calabrocoa? The calabrocoa. Yeah, so you can kind of see the, you know the you know the you know the blooms next to each other. You right. know, and the calabrocoa does have that smaller more almost more kind of like a nickel sized mm -hmm. flower and then you get almost a you know, half dollar, half yeah. dollar quarter size right. on that. And I was trying to also think of the vigor between the sweet potato oh, vine and sure. a calabrocoa, and I feel like the the pedicoa would be more vigorous than the calabrocoa, so that might balance out uh, more. Right. But you know, those colors are so beautiful, you can almost do both. Right. Depending how big that container is, right. I think that they would both play really well with a canna and, I don't know, it just adds more pizzazz. Right. And the nice thing about any of these, though, is you can swap the color out. Mm -hmm. So, yes. you know, if those oranges and reds aren't necessarily what you're wanting to go with, mm -hmm. you have a lot of kind of neutral colors that you could splash it up mm -hmm. and do some different brighter colors or something like that to, to tailor it. And that's, exactly. That's kind of, you know, we'll find that with all of these containers is, mm -hmm. you know, you have kind of your meat and potatoes in there, right. and then you can swap it out and tailor it to whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, it's fun it's to play. Um, so I, I hate to interrupt, but you had mentioned Thriller, and this brings yes. up the old <laughs> container rule. And I don't yes. know if this holds true with all containers. Thriller, spiller, filler. Yes. Can you fill us in on what that means? Absolutely. It's kind of like the layers of a cake almost. So yeah. you've got your top layer, and that's your Thriller, your fun and stuff. And then you have your middle layer, which is the fillers, and that's the, the, fluff, the fluffy middle layer. And then at the end, you have your spillers, and they fall over. So that's your, like lower look tier so you have this multiple layered composition instead well you can do it like all one layer but mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to have multiple yeah. layers to yeah, read you don't yeah, like i said you don't have to have that it's right. you know more of a common approach just to get that right. height and differentiation but it's doesn't have to be you could all right. have more of a mounted ball right. like if you yeah. want yeah, yeah. you know like i think for new people mm -hmm. you, you have those rules to do and then you can break all the rules exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly there's no rules to right. rules. Yeah. that's the part of the fun of annuals and containers i've been meeting a lot of people with established gardens like 20 year old gardens like right. mine is i don't have much sun yet left so i play this is my play time right yes. and like you can experiment right. and, and design and be creative yeah because yeah. right. there aren't any rules you yeah. have to enjoy it yeah <laughs> okay, so that's kind of your, your summer, tropical summer tropical look, and there are definitely other tropical plants you right. can put in there, you know, big leafy bananas and things yep. like that you could tailor. Mm -hmm. So then next? you have another themed. My next theme is kind of, well, you pointed out the pollinator part, and I was also going for drought tolerant as okay. well, or oh. like something that can take hot sun. Mm -hmm. um, not that you it will want water, but <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm loving some of the newer salvias. This is rock and blue suede shoes. Um, it's not even open yet, and I'm fascinated by the dark black blue calyx. Mm -hmm. And then when this flower opens, it's going to be that classic bright blue, large flowered salvia. Wow! So another hummingbird magnet. So and, the, and these get pretty pretty large. So it's yes, yeah, they do. Um, they get 30 to 40 inches high. So that would be your thriller. Yeah, yeah, the big focal point. Um, the next layer down, I love the Heliochrysum icicles. It's, it's so another delicate. fun, lacy texture. It's also a petting plant. <laughs> it's soft and fuzzy, so it's got this these long gray leaves. And because it's fuzzy, that's why it's drought tolerant, because Perfect. those hairs on the leaves um, keep moisture in. And does it get a flower or not usually? No, it's just pretty it's much just a texture. foliage. Right, foliage just kind of gives you that pop, that silver against the green or the other, mm -hmm. the other color. It's, it's really pretty. Yeah, such a different And texture. you can pet it. And yes. you can, any <laughs> plants that you can pet, yes. Um, and then for spiller, uh, oh, my next filler, is um, Lantana. Oh, look at that. That bright, bright, this is orange, yellow, a little bit of coral in the bud phase. Um, just so much going on. Super drought tolerant, another hummingbird magnet. So this is yeah. gonna be a hummingbird lunch pot. And you know, <laughs> when it, the blue with the orange will be such a pretty contrast. Right. Yes. That'll yeah. be eye-catching. I love contrasting colors. Pretty. And are the yellow, are these little uh, spillers on the bottom, yeah. is that for this one? Um, yes, it is for this one. This is a great portulaca. It's a wow, large it's leaf. huge. Yeah. Right. Um, pizzazz yellow. So oh. it's got a really big succulent leaf and a large, what is that, almost a quarter size yellow right. flower. That's really nice. And, um, and I just loved how the purslane 
texture and flower contrast so much with the next one, fan flower, scavola. Nice. Which I feel is underutilized. I do. I do it too. is. It is. And it's kind of in between. It's kind of up a little bit. It's up about six, eight inches. Mm -hmm. it's, a f it's a filler, but yeah. then it also spills. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of dual. And there's and some, you know, they'll spill down quite, quite a ways. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some varieties they'll say a little bit more compacted depending right. on which mm -hmm. one. But Very there's nice. that purple color uh, just and the shape of the flowers yeah. is different than what Very it's different. exotic looking yeah. almost mm -hmm. yeah my co-worker was just saying her scavolas weave in and out of things really nicely yes. too so. yeah so it looks kind of instead of having more compartmentalized compartmentalized <laughs> <laughs> um it all kind of blend blends mm -hmm. together which is nice yeah now you talked a little bit about you know these all being drought tolerant mm -hmm. plants mm -hmm. so in a container let's expand a little bit on that right. so you you know, because it's kind of you can't just plant it and then forget no. about it. <laughs> <laughs> then you will have a crispy container. There right. you go. <laughs> right. But, so um, when they talk about drought tolerance in, in containers, you still you know, need to what? I mean, a you need a decent sized container because if you're cramming all of this into like they right. just barely fit in the containers, it won't be drought tolerant. Right. <laughs> right. So it, they'll need some root space to grow into it. Um, meaning, like uh, my containers are on the south wall Ooh, on concrete. Um, so yeah, they can handle that hot heat. Right. Um, so definitely they need to be watered every day. Mm -hmm. um, you can also put like water holding crystals in containers to mm -hmm. help them get through extremely hot periods. Yeah. And talk a little bit about soil too. Right. Like what kind of soil should we use for these containers? I strictly use potting soil right? Um, okay. because it's well drained. Um, I usually mix in um, sure Start fertilizer in oh, the container. It's got mycorrhiza in it. Mm -hmm. which helps the roots kind of get water more right. and helps them get off to a good start. Um, also, when I'm planting my containers and everything, I use maxi crop or liquid seaweed oh, okay. because it helps with transplant shock. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I've planted a memorial garden on a 100 degree day and used good. maxi crop to make it Wow, it comes that's a good better. testimony. Work. Yeah. Definitely. Because yeah. most of these that you have planted in this drought tolerant pollinator mix tend to not show wilt. Yes. A lot, mm -hmm. like where some other things are right. that kind of that indicator where they'll, yeah. they'll let you know when they're thirsty, yeah. where the drought tolerant stuff tends to be a little bit more, more rigid and stiff. Mm -hmm. More and not resilient. As, yeah. I think the salvia um, would be the indicator plant. Yeah. yeah. You'd start seeing it flag. Yeah. yeah. Which is important to kind of remember as you're mm -hmm. out there. You know, your plants are kind of talking back to you and they, they kind of let you know when they're right. either you know, thirsty and need something to drink yeah. or they're starting to, you know, like you talk about fertilizer, right? You know, which we talk about that oh, yeah. every again, but it's, you know, they kind of you know start losing their color a little bit, yeah. right. and they'll tell you, you know. that they're they're right. hungry. Yeah, right. yeah. It's kind of like after work, I walk around my containers in mm -hmm. my garden to just like take stock. Yeah. And it's my way of decompressing for the yeah. day too. It's like, how are my babies doing? Right. That's so true. But, but I think we can get into we'll get into that at okay. the end, just some basic care. Yeah. About, but when, just before I forget, let's put it in everybody. Right. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. We're having so much fun about pets. Oh wait. Yes. Here's, Next, I did a partial shade combination. Um, I also have a front yard that faces west with 45 foot liquid ambers in front. Oh. So I get that like tiny little dose of afternoon sun, but that's about it. And it's kind of challenging. Mm -hmm. um, so what I found that works, um, cordelines are very versatile. Um, this one I love, it's cha-cha, so we all can start dancing. <laughs> um, it's this great vertical spiky. Um, it has coral and peach and lemon and then some lime colors down at the bottom so it's just like a very dynamic foliage thriller component um, and there's some pinks in there so my next layer down i went for coleus um, french corner which is this bright pink explosion with All different colors. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of color going yeah. on, on and those, i love color. that you're picking up the color because it makes it even pop more in the quarter line because you're kind of emphasizing it mm -hmm. that's neat yeah um, so it's just and bright for the shade. Yeah. It's just so fun. Right. It's just like, oh wow, <laughs> let's go over there. Right, yeah. right. Um, Which is kind of a good tip to remember in those mm -hmm. shadier areas to plant lighter colored mm -hmm. plants and flowers because it does brighten it up. Whereas you up. put a lot of dark colored flowers, it kind of gets gets lost, lost. In, in the shade. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. I Begonia. know. I'm in this love. is a new one. Minstrel I love that. yellow. It's just so different. And again, it has that peach mm -hmm. on the back sides of the petals. Um, it's like this is a semi trailing. So it's like a lax upright, as you say, in fuchsias. So it's got some upright height and then it kind of softens the edges as well. Excellent. Yeah. And then just like. Yeah, it kind of pulls out the color of the coleus and mm -hmm. also in the cordyline. Mm -hmm. 
And then finding a spiller for partial shade in pink was kind of challenging. Oh, okay. Um, I was looking for a uh, pink bacopa. Okay. Um, but I don't have any at the moment. So I found this adorable little Piccadilly apple blossom diacea um, really that nice. can do partial shade. Because um, I kind of wanted to tie the pinks all the way down right. to the spiller layer. So that'll be a fun, dainty. Yeah, and, and you're like touch. continuing with that different textures, different right, colors. Right, right, it's so mm -hmm. tiny. You know, the colors yeah. have that real bold mm -hmm. leaf structure with right. a lot of color, and then you have the dainty with the And with the dainty. And, yes, right. definitely. Yeah. And bacopa, I mean, that's a nice substitute if you yeah. can't find the dice, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's another nice one. There's, mm -hmm. you know, you go to your garden centers and there's so much to choose from. Right. So. Or they're just out of that one thing, like, right. so uh, you also mentioned the terrinias, Tur the pink yes, terrinia would nice have been one. great mm -hmm. too. All right, what else you got? Okay. I see some grasses here. Yeah, so one thing I, so the side of my house, I grow a lot of my cut flowers because I don't have a ton of sun left in a 20-year-old garden. <laughs> so I've got dahlias, and then I supplement them with, um, I'm really into dried flowers. Oh. So I've got some uh, heliochrysum or straw flower going on here. One of my coworkers just pointed out it's an audible plant. <laughs> like, you can hear yeah, it. Yeah. You can, like, play with the petals. So this straw flower, um, this is a new one for me. This is per Periot. It's a small one, mm -hmm. and it's very floriferous. I've been growing it at home. And um, it's a daisy with multiple layers of petals, and this one's all white. And so it's just like yeah. a darling. That, like you said, that straw flower, it's real crisp. It's crisp mm -hmm. and papery. Yeah. It's like another one you want to touch. And, and play with. <laughs> what's so weird about them is they open to this dried look mm -hmm. or feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, they're very unusual. Yeah. Um, and another dried or keep is status, um, and I grow it every year. This is a beautiful dual violet. So kind of you have these um, candelabra style mm -hmm. flowers, and um, they open. This one's opening blue with a little white center. Um, and I grabbed a little yellow one from outside that was starting to bloom too. And these are kind of the typical status you'll find you know, mm -hmm. in, in flower bouquets okay. and, yep. in mm -hmm. the stores. And me. Yeah, and so I just and I have four boxes of dried flowers because <laughs> I'm so into it. <laughs> um, and then I brought in the uh, purple fountain grass because bunny tails are always fun to work into bouquets. You got some animation and movement. Yeah. Um, you can dry them again. Um, and so it's like, yeah, having movement to your bouquets, I feel is just, yeah. it just really brings uh, us. And smile. it's another softness yeah. that mm -hmm. goes in because yeah. with, with the, the status and the you know, the straw flowers are a little bit more of a stiffer mm -hmm. look where you get that movement and that yeah. texture with the, with the grass. So some, yeah, some nice contrast there. We have some mixed containers from another grower outside, and the straw flowers are like three inches across. Wow. Like, they're wow. so huge. Yeah, wow. And these are mostly all annuals. They, yeah. Just the summer till frost, but they're, you'll really enjoy them. Yeah. Well, and yeah. you also get the cut, the cut yeah, and you dry them. Yeah, yeah the cut and dried. Yeah. So actually you can get years out of <laughs> annuals. Right, right. <laughs> All right, now we're getting down to, we have some tall things, but did you want to yeah. talk about those yet or um, about the other sure. fragrant ones? Okay, we can talk about the tall things. So okay. a lot of folks um, will have an evergreen focal point in their mm -hmm. containers. So something that's there all the time. And then you fill around the base with annuals. So sure. it's like you've got your focal point that's there all year round, but you can like play at the base of it. Every season you can change, mm -hmm. which is so nice. Mm -hmm. We all get tired of things. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't change it yeah. Um, so for like a shadier situation, I did the uh, Cephalotaxis uh, Korean or Gold Plum U. Um, so this looks like a U, but it has gold new growth, which is, yeah, really nice. And I like when you're doing like a centerpiece that's an evergreen, I like having something columnar so you have a lot of space to play mm -hmm. around it. Um, so I thought this, was, this one's um, going to get in ground, 6 to 10 feet tall by 3 to 6 feet wide in 10 yeah. years right it's not gonna <laughs> stop growing um and it's part shade zone six nice but a lot of these that are like in big pots by being in a pot kind of restricts their yeah. growth a That's little bit true. too so you won't have as much growth as you will if yeah. it's in, in the ground within limited room exactly right. Right. yeah and a lot of people ask how long can it be in this pot yeah. and it's like well until it runs out of root space mm -hmm. um yeah. you know it won't be able to hold water or fertilizer anymore yeah. um at that point, you want to put it in the garden. Um, you can root prune to put it back in the pot. I just oh, smart. Ha haven't been that adventurous yet. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it out, put it in the yard, and yeah. plant something. Plant something. Bonsai it. It has to be a big bonsai. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought that was a really That's fun focal point for shade. 
And this it's Holly, fun. I had Look never seen. I'm like, who are you? This is Ilex Carnatic. Um, Ruby Colonnade. Well, look at the new growth. Yeah. has that burgundy look. Yeah. And then it's green. It almost looks like a narrow boxwood, mm -hmm. but I love this. This it's is really shiny nice. Yeah, too. With the burgundy new, yeah. new tip and yeah. growth on it. So and I love the shiny neat. factor mm -hmm. of it. And most Ilex Coronados, if I'm not mistaken, they can do light shade. Right. Yeah. They're pretty versatile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it can also do full sun. And just like having that burgundy tone to play with it with your annual combinations look. would be very nice. And, and that it, stays... Never, and evergreen. Yeah, so, evergreen. Yep. So you leave it in there, you have something to look at even in the winter. Yeah, time, and nice this what, one, what what's that the cold hardy? Um, 12 feet by 8 feet. So this I would prune. Yeah, and you could just shear yeah. it yeah. narrow. But it has easily. a natural... Yeah. That Columnar natural, yeah. Um, zone seven to nine. Oh, so ten degrees. Yeah, yep. zero, zero to ten. To ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in colder climates too, I see a lot of people. They'll do the annuals in the summer, and then they'll do like um, cut floral or things oh, sure. in the winter yeah, stuff in there, kind of as a that would be nice addition. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move this so yes. that you can talk about these guys because these are really cool. I wanted to do a scratch and sniff container. <laughs> I'm an herbalist. So. <laughs> and how scratch and sniff is fun. Well, it's, a, it's our smell of vision, so yes. we'll just we'll talk about the fragrances and we'll let the viewers kind of Yeah, yeah. they have to go experience it. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm really into um, Santalina Lemon Fizz. Um, it's, I don't know why. I just love the it fragrance nice. of it. And I love that color, that yeah. chartreuse, and then little white flowers. Or, uh -huh, yeah. Little white button flowers, and the texture. I mean, it's like feathers, it chartreuse does. Yeah. feathers. That San is Lina is typically like a real silver, mm -hmm. lacy foliage, and then this one is kind of real chartreuse, yeah. lime, lime, green, yeah. lime green, with the yellow flower. Which kind of the little, they're cute as a button. Yeah. They, they look are. like little <laughs> eyeballs. <Yeah. laughs> and they do, if you were to try to describe the scent of a... Oh. It's um, spicy. It is a yeah, spicy, resiny, mm -hmm. medicinally. Yeah, but in a camphor. good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. camphor. Camphory. That's a good way. Camphor. But yeah, it is really nice. It gets a uh, 12 to 18 inches high and wide. Definitely needs full. It's drought tolerant, okay. hot sun. Um, hardy to 25 degrees. So okay. in colder places, it would need protection. Right. right. Just get right. a new one. Um, so cool. yeah, that's just a. I like to feature. You do have to walk, watch out for reversion. On this, oh, so, will it go silver? Yeah, green? Uh, green. Okay, you'll get a green leaf yeah, so here and there. Let's just touch on reversion yeah, a little right. bit. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, so what, what is re reversion? So you see it a lot, especially in um, variegated plants, mm -hmm. or you know, this is not a common color for Santalina, so um, it reverts back to the parent plant, oh, sure. what it originally came from. So a lot of things are sports, like oh, we found this one mutant in this patch, uh -huh. right. and then um, so sometimes the I guess the genetics kind of weaken and oh sure. So you'll have a green. Right. So if you'll see this, like this is on this lemon fizz, mm -hmm. you'll see a, a kind of a solid green yeah. new growth coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what to take care of that? Uh -huh. <laughs> is there something you can do? Yeah. What would you nip it in the bud? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah, just... Kind of remove remove that green part yeah. out because it's going to continue to grow. Right. And it tends to be a little bit more mm. aggressive. Yeah. Being the, being the parent than. So it will eventually kind of take over. Yep. So if you stay on top of snipping out right. the green, it gets the rest. It's of like um, rootstock on roses. Oh yeah, yeah when they come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's the wild yeah. rose. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good analogy. That's yeah. right. We've all had that happen. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, why is that different? <laughs> what else you have? Um, I am a super big fan of scented geraniums. I can't help it. Um, this is con color lace. It's just it was so cute, mm -hmm. and it's got tiny. these tiny hot pink flowers, mm -hmm. and it's just very compact. Um, hmm. Minty, minty, yep. I don't know what's your. Yeah, and now I have too much Santorini on my fingers. We need some <laughs> sensory overload. We need some coffee bins to cleanse our palate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's but just the scented geraniums come in lots of so many, so many flavors. Yeah. yeah, I started collecting them. Oh, yeah. So yes. what kind of what kind of flavors would you or scents will you find in the scented? Um, ginger, apple, um, rose, of course, yeah. good old classic. Chocolate mint, um, pear, oh. pine. Um, lemon? Lemon. Like lemon. Oh gosh, there's so yeah. many like lemons and citronellas yes. and the mosquito yes. shocker. And, right, yes. right. Um, yeah, there's tons of those. Um, and just smaller flowers than the the one that we all know that big red ball. Yeah. But you can really identify it. It looks so similar, but the flowers mm -hmm. just a little smaller. The mm -hmm. leaves are a little smaller. Yeah, and there's a lot of variation of the flowers within the different scented too, uh -huh. which is really fun. Mm -hmm. I've got a variegated 
mint one right now. That's Ooh, really good. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Nice. So then you have some other more smell of visions. Yep. Look at this lacy foliage. Yeah. I love this green. It's like just lacy, mm -hmm. but it looks familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, this is lemon gem marigold. I love the gem marigold mm -hmm. for the fragrance. Yeah. Um, you smell and that. when I was farming, we always grew them for the edible flower mix okay. for the salads. Oh, that's um, a nice tip. And yeah. In this foliage, it's similar to a regular marigold foliage, but a lot lacier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much lacier. But the bloom is totally. It's tiny. Yeah, it is tiny. Yeah. It's and, cute. And just single. Yep. Yeah, single really nice. kind of tangerine color, mm -hmm. um, but that foliage is very lemony. It is, it's I can like smell that. Citrusly. Right. I know, I'm standing here. It's gone guess, over like, the yeah. sandal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then you have some thymes. I love using thymes for spillers. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I mean the silver posy that we have in your right hand, um, this oh, one is uh, variegated um, white with a silver edge and that cute little lavender flower. That one's a little more upright than spilly. Um, but still, it's not a nice filler and c contrasting colors to what else we have going on. And then the lime is, again, it's, it's chartreuse but it's a little more on the green side mm -hmm. of lime. Um, they have white flowers. And that one's just going to spill over the edge of the pot. And um, lemon thyme's another good one. That is a good one. Variegated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then variegated. Yeah. yeah, but they're great fragrant spillers. Well, I've like noticed the Santa Elena and the Times will both come back. Yes. Right, those are yeah. evergreen. Yeah. They're, yeah, and they're evergreen. Evergreen. Yeah. Yeah. And I've really noticed a lot of bees on thyme. Mm -hmm. Bees love thyme. Yeah. So that's a good one for pollinators, too, yep. if you wanted to put that in your And pots. the Santa Elena as well. So this For sure. Be, yeah. And more drought dollar. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Yeah, all of them. A lot of things that are resinous or hairy tend to be on the drought. Heat, heat tolerant, heat tolerant. drought mm -hmm. tolerant thyme. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. A lot of people say that by planting a fragrant plant like these that you've just shown us, they can keep mosquitoes away. Is that true? Mm, I want a scientific study. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody say, yeah, I planted this and it didn't work. And apparently if for it to work, you have to constantly yes, brush the You have to release right. the oils, yeah. you know, unless if they're trapped within the leaf, they're not really going right. to do anything. So yeah, I kind of was like, Oh, where's the citronella geraniums? I want to keep the mosquitoes away. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you can rub the gera yeah. rub the leaf, leaf on your skin. On your oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, pennyroyal's another one that repels mosquitoes. Oh, that's ex that's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. And the, but deer, deer resistant. Yes. These thymes and the Santalina, right. they mm -hmm. really are because they're usually the fragrant yeah. foliage they don't like. Right. So maybe plant them by your roses and they won't eat your roses. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to talk about tips for keeping your container nice and fresh, through, even through the hottest days of the summer. We'll be right back. Here at Capital Subaru, we are family. From you, our customers, our coworkers, and even our actual family members work here. This is my son, Casey. We're generations ahead of the competition, and we're always working to keep you and your family moving. We're here for you. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. All the support you need, from sales and financing, to service and parts. We'll be here for you for generations to come. And generations after that. I'm Blake. And I'm Casey. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family, where it's your, Your way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. At Portland Nursery, we believe that gardening is a creative endeavor that enriches our experience, enlivens the spaces around us, and provides a safe haven for the mind. Portland Nursery has everything you need to make your space feel unique, inviting, and exciting. From house plants and hedges to trees, tools, veggies, and herbs, our selection is always growing and changing, just like you. Come visit us today at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. And welcome back to Garden Time. We are at Portland Nursery on uh, Stark Street. Uh, they also have a store on Division here in Portland, Oregon. And we're talking with Laura about containers. And we just talked about combinations mm -hmm. of containers before. Um, now we're going to talk about care. And I'm going to lead off with the first question. These are summer containers. So summer, you're dealing with heat and water. So what are some of your tips for that? 
Um, my first tip is I discovered this great slow release fertilizer, Clean Water Grow. This is the all purpose formula. I am terrible at fertilizing. I will admit it. I'm busy <laughs> and I have 50,000 plants. So having a slow release just is a lifesaver. Um, and I like that it's really, it's, it's local here um, and it's very sustainable, um, made from uh, just a local Water treatment. Water yeah. treatment plant. That's the words I'm right. looking for. And you know, Garden Time did a segment on it, and so Jeff is going to put the se the segment um, link to it. And so, really, it's a very cool process, and um, and we're using we're recycling things yeah. more so than you think. Yeah. So right. it's really and cool. And there's a lot of other you know synthetics out right. there too, and some other organic stuff. But this is kind of a nice one. Mm -hmm. So on, on the slow release for fertilizer that people do, they plant it in the ground when they're planting it. Or is it more as a top dress on the top? Either one. Oh, okay. So it's my easy. <laughs> yeah, my boss used to mix it in her potting medium before she planted. Um, I usually don't have it, so I have to put it on top afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. Then when they do put it in the soil, mm -hmm. you know, there's some fertilizers that you know people will just throw a handful in the bottom pot, right. set the plant right on oh. top of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, good idea. That's a burn situation. Right. So yeah. Because when the roots come in direct contact mm -hmm. with that high quantities so you yeah. want to tip it, put it in a hole mix it mm. in with the hole yeah. and then at the bottom and then plant your plants right. on yeah. top of that and another thing to remember about slow releases is they often don't activate until we get hot mm, so sure. I mean if you're planting in the cooler part of the season they're not really going to be doing a whole lot yet and then how long will it last on average six six months Oh, okay. So not you don't have to worry about it unless you plant really early. If you have a, a warmer climate and you plant mm -hmm. really early, mm -hmm. so maybe make a note that right. I have to revisit that. Yeah, put right. it on your calendar mm -hmm. or in your phone. Your phone. <laughs> and, so, and it's good to have that in there, but also to supplement yes. with with like a, a weekly liquid mm -hmm. liquid mm -hmm. feed or some other mm -hmm. fertilizer to go along with it. This kind of maintains. But right. It, doesn't give it a huge boost, right? Right. If you want to bo boost your flower power, um, a liquid is really the way to go. This is um, Fox Farm Organic Liquid Plant Fluid Big Bloom. So it says it all there. It helps um, get the flowers going. Um, every other week, I would say at a minimum once a month, because um, or every week ideally. Mm -hmm. um, Rosie's baskets are just fertilized yeah. so much that they're like, wow, okay, that's what fertilizer yeah. does. Right. So. Well, to keep them blooming, you really yeah. need to give them some vitamins and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it's nice to have the slow release because that yeah. you, know, you forget, you know, it's, it's, it's still it's yeah. that good insurance plan right. that's yeah. in the pot and it helps with the root. Exactly. And, and you know, you go on vacation, it's right. still getting fertilized. Right. Definitely. And All then right. you have another one mm -hmm. here. And this, um, this is maxi crop. This is the one I spoke about okay. earlier when I'm planting actually everything that I plant I will water in with maxi crop because it helps with transplanting shock. Okay. Um, a lot of times when you're planting you're like ripping that root ball apart mm -hmm. because you want to stimulate new root growth again. So this kind of is like a little soothing drink. <laughs> um, I use it at my nursery too and we call it juice. Okay. So yeah. all the little baby seedlings get their juice drink after being transplanted. Oh, great so. idea. You know, help, help just that transplant from them wilting down. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, with, you have the warm weathers this time of year. Sure. That we're, it like, comes in handy warm. then too, like after a heat wave, like giving them a little drink of this um, mm -hmm. will kind of help, help pep plants up again. Okay. And then the there's also, one? Another fer fertilizer. This is the use. one that I talked about earlier sure. too that I mix in my potting soil. Okay. Um, sure Start, it's got the mycorrhiza in it. It's got all like the bone meal and all the basics that you need to get the plants going off really well. So would you use this in addition to all of the other ones or? Yes. In the, oh, okay. wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's options, but definitely like I start with this and then and the maxi crop and then I move on to the others. And explain again about mycorrhizae again. Yeah, it's very such a cool, cool thing. thing. It's a very cool thing. The world of fungus. They're yeah. so amazing. And I'm so glad they're becoming popular. Mm -hmm. People are really latching on. Do not on be to afraid. Them. Yeah, don't be afraid. They're these magical creatures. Um, they have this amazing symbiotic relationship with the roots of the plants. Um, and they can help the roots, the plant, find water and nutrients much farther out than the plant can go. Cool. And in return, the plant will give sugars to the fungus as like a thank you. So it's just like this amazing dance of a relationship. Right. There, there's a lot going on in the soil yeah. of it. And there's so much going that. on underneath down there that we can't <laughs> see and it's just this like magical dance. Right. And you know, so people, you know, we've, we've talked about this a lot over the years about, you know, planting, you know, you've got a, a $20 hole for a $10 
dollar plant, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. you're, you know, by the time you're adding, you know, good soil, but it's it's really an investment that you're making into those those plants and the longevity to keep those going on, mm -hmm. which is why it's important to have, you know, the, the fertilizers and the good right. nutrients the and the good good soil. Yeah, you know, it's the same as we talked about in the ground versus doing the same when you're in a container. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you're planting in a landscape, you could use these products too, not just for containers. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So really, you gave us so much information across the board for so many different kinds of gardening. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. now, so we have our plants. We, we pick, have our plants. We, picked out our, picked we out fed our them. Styles. <laughs> we have, have the, you know, the, you know, to keep, it, keep them going. So what do we need to look at if either we're looking at like either new containers mm -hmm. or if we have existing containers that we're looking to looking to replant you know, what kind of size do we need yeah. or you know type you know materials of pots or does that matter um it does and it doesn't uh terracotta is going to dry out faster okay. because it's a porous material so um actually my coworker greg who used to run our information desk always says soak your terracotta before you plant Great it idea. Um, that way it's not going to be wicking moisture out right away mm -hmm. i wouldn't necessarily use like terracotta on my south facing wall Okay. Um, because it's gonna, it's adding another mm. layer of drying out. Um, good for succulents. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about like a glazed ceramic pot? Glaze. Once you get um, glazed ceramic, will not wick the moisture okay. out because you have that glaze. That kind of seal, seals mm -hmm. that in. Yeah. You want to make sure you get high, high value glazed pots though, so they don't crack in the winter. Right. Because there are some more of the indoor mm -hmm. plants that yeah, it's slip gas that it's a little lighter weight. Mm -hmm. that they intended not mm -hmm. to hold up to the freezing Right, and terracotta cracks in the winter too. Uh, right. And then what about some of the new um, resin yeah. or plastic? They're so lightweight. They're fabulous. And they're really cool. I mean, the designs are getting better, yes. so those right. are good to do too. Those are great, definitely. Yeah, I'm learning. It's like if I plant a giant glaze pot, it's staying oh. there. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, and I also have learned to put bricks underneath the pots mm. so the drainage hole doesn't get clogged up. Ah, I um, almost killed one of my roses because oh. I just put it like right on the, on the concrete and the drainage it had been in there for so long it started plugging up the drainage hole and Gosh. so i had to lift it up with i just have bricks running around, laying around you know, for that. people have talked about you know putting like you know gravel at the bottom of the pot to help mm. you know the soil to fill in or yeah. putting a rock over the drainage hole no yeah because yeah, then that. you're just blocking yeah <laughs> blocking yeah. The drainage hole, right? yeah and also if you're putting gravel in the bottom of the hole your pot you're raising the water table Oh, so sure. it has it can't hold as much water. Mm -hmm. So like the less soil that's in the pot, the less water it can contain. So especially in a hot situation, you want to have that full right. root right. zone for it to be holding water. Yeah. It's really worth the investment, even for those big urns, mm -hmm. to get that extra bag of soil mm -hmm. and go all the way. Right. Yeah. That's, that's really good advice. Right, because later on you don't want to pull it all out and yeah. fill in more. No, so. right. for yeah. sure. And, so you, uh, you know, we talk about drainage, and drainage is very important. So mm -hmm. having a pot, if you're going to be outside, having it drained properly. But that drainage also means that in the summertime, if you go on vacation, sometimes your pot will drain out and dry out. Yes. Is uh, What uh, tips would you give if somebody comes home and keeps watering their plant and it doesn't come back? Yeah, oh. that's like when you come back and the soil is like half an inch away from the edge of the container, that mm -hmm. means you've gotten to the bone dry situation. Um, if it's a small enough container, I would put it in a saucer um, and let it and slowly like slowly water it, but it can soak water up from the bottom mm -hmm. as well. Um, I've had some emergency houseplant situations. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, okay, get the bowl, go to the bathtub, <laughs> right. and put the whole basket in the bowl in the bathtub. It's, it's kind of like yeah. a sponge, you know, when it yeah. dries out, it, yeah. sh it shrinks right. and then yes. it needs to re it rehydrate. Needs to re it almost hydrate. needs to soak and be yeah. submerged a little bit to re rehydrate. To rehydrate, yeah, because if you see the water going straight down, yeah. it's not getting with, you can also scratch up the soil surface some too mm -hmm. because it's this almost glass layer on top or yes. this like yeah. really slick layer yeah. that's keeping it from rehydrating. Um, another tip when I am planting, so I'll mix my soil with the sure start and then I moisten it before I plant. So ah, I'm not planting into dry soil. Um, right. The roots are much happier going into a slightly <laughs> moist situation right. rather than like a bone dry potting soil. It's, it's similar to like the trees and shrubs we talk about right. when we mudding in, mudding, mudding in right. you fill your hole with water mm -hmm. first yeah. so it's nice and wet and then plant. Yeah, because it is hard to get potting soils fully wet once you're in the pot. Right. 
And then, so what if it is a tragedy and, um, but like the main plant is fine, mm -hmm. but like all the little annuals maybe have bit the dust. And yeah. so do I have to like take that all apart? What can I do? No. Because I'm really busy. Right. <laughs> and you're going away again in two weeks, <laughs> and, but you want it to look nice when you come home. Right, right. right. Um, you can just pull out the tragic ones um, <laughs> and go to your garden center and find something. You probably won't find the same thing, mm -hmm. just so, so you know, because like it's later in the season, the crops are done. So you'll just have to be open to a new creative idea, yeah, it's and it might, yeah, <laughs> and it might be like, oh, let's put some herbs in there. You know, right. we talked about that. So it's um, a good, good opportunity to change it up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. At the end of the season, it's the same, same kind of concept. And you have right? multiple combinations in one year. Right, which is fun to have. <laughs> it that, is fun. Yeah, yeah. we want now, to be creative. Now I see you know, a lot of people. You know, we all do do containers. Mm -hmm. I I tend to plant my containers very full. You know, I'm kind of that instant gratification mm -hmm. kind of guy where I'm just like cramming every square inch oh, yeah. of a plant to start with and let, yep. it, let it go. Now others may you know, have like the large 18 inch container and put like three mm -hmm. little plants and you see lots of soil yeah. at the time. Is there pros, cons to, to that or is it no, personal preference? No, I did both this year. Yeah. Um, I just had so many cute things that looked great together. It's like, okay, a six pack of alyssum is gonna fill in every little hole in this hanging basket. Right. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to run out of root space sooner in those jam-packed combinations, but you edit. Oh, like okay. that alyssum's probably going to come out because it's going to get blown out and not look great. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm going to accommodate for more root space for the other things. But it looked nice for that, that time, but now and, it's kind of evolving. Yeah. So yeah, it's not a problem. And, and, and it was really fun to put seven <laughs> different things in one yeah. container. And I'll find that you know, some things will choke out sure. others yes. by the end mm -hmm. of the summer, which I'm okay with because right. I got to enjoy this big full right. planter for a month or two and right. earlier in the season. Sure. That, so it's, there's no right or wrong right. to it. So Exactly. And if you just put three plants in that container and let it fill in, then it's just... And you can also see, it's like, oh, well, it didn't fill in as much as I want to. Mm -hmm. So you can add in a couple more later. Right. So, yeah. It's good to make notes. Yeah. What worked, what didn't, was it too sunny, too shady? And then you can kind of build on that the next year. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, Laura, thank you so much for being with us. Um, Portland Nursery has some great brochures online mm -hmm. for plant selection, for containers, pollinator plants. Yeah. Their uh, downloadable sheets are just fantastic. You guys had to do a great job with thank that. You. Um, if you have any questions at all and you live in the Portland, Vancouver metro area here in Oregon, Southwest Washington, you can always come to either Portland Nursery location or you can go to your local independent garden center. Um, they will have the plants that work for your area and they'll be able to help you out. So Laura, once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in, listening and watching. And we look forward to seeing you next time and happy gardening. For 75 years, Owl's Garden and Home has been a favorite destination of local gardeners. Starting in a small roadside fruit stand off of 99E in Woodburn by Al Biggie, Owl's has grown to four retail locations in the Portland metro area that also includes a huge growing operation near Hubbard. To ensure that you get the highest quality, Owl's grows over 80% of the plants they sell. This fourth generation family owned business is now one of the most recognized garden centers in the country. Stop by one of our four locations to learn why Owls is the first stop for Northwest Gardeners. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Here at Capital Subaru, we are family. From you, our customers, our coworkers, and even our actual family members work here. This is my son, Casey. We're generations ahead of the competition, and we're always working to keep you and your family moving. We're here for you. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. All the support you need, from sales and financing to service and parts. We'll be here for you for generations to come. And generations after that. I'm Blake. And I'm Casey. We make it easy to join our Capital Subaru family. Where it's your, your way on, on the, the parkway. parkway.